Well, I told you in the last video that we were going to have a sponsor. Um, Creality, um, I guess they watched our video that we did with Joel, uh, the 3D printing nerd. Um, I'll put that down in the description. Um, anyway, uh, I have been in contact with Creality and they sent me uh, this little guy here, which I'll show you in just a second. But they're also sending me one of their large format printers, the CRM4. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this is. <clears throat> this is actually something really cool. This is a scanner here. So you can see um, it comes in a very nice, tidy, small package. Um, we need a 3D scanner in order to do the uh, roof for the car because I have to uh, scan the windshield surround uh, and the roof and all of the other things there. So this is really going to come in handy. Now, Creality isn't paying me to do this um, other than providing me with this uh, product. And there are tons of reviews on YouTube on this particular product. So I encourage you to go see those. Um, what I'm going to do here is basically show you my implementation of it and how it works for effectively scanning the, the whole car. One of the things that I have faced is that from side to side, um, the panels, you know, kind of warp a little bit and, and need a little tweaking and so on and so forth. And so sometimes they don't come out uh, symmetric. And so this will help me uh, uh, look at those areas other than the manual tool I have. And then also be able to publish the scans so that um, you guys can get information on, say, a pair of headlights, so, which I have OEM headlights for, um, and maybe even the dash uh, for some of my other uh, Aventador builders. So we're going to go ahead and put this together. I'm going to do some scans. Uh, you can use either your cell phone or a laptop. So we'll try the cell phone first, and then um, I'll do a live scan uh, with my laptop because I only have one cell phone, uh, which is what I shoot my videos on. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get this uh, together and then we'll uh, go out to the car. We'll scan, I think, the front fender um, and see how that goes. Um, I watched a few videos on how to implement this and how to use it properly. So hopefully I can do that. All right, let's check it out. So here's the scan. Um, it did a really good job. Um, it got a lot of the details of the fender. You can see it even got the wheel. Um, so what we can do is we can put this in mesh mixer and we can actually cut out all of the part of the point cloud that we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll put it into SolidWorks and then let's see uh, how that looks. So now that we got it into SolidWorks, I actually you can see the point cloud here or the mesh. Um, and then what I did was I went and I re, um, re engineered it uh, so we can hide that. And then now you can see this is a accurate representation of the passenger side fender as it sits on the car right now. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, I gotta say, I really like the um, scan ferret. It was very easy to use. My first scan turned out uh, basically perfect. So, and now I've been able to re-engineer the panel after all the body work and any distortions I might have and here's how it sits. So absolutely fantastic. I plan on doing this with the rest of the car, which will give me a perfect representation of what's on the car currently and allow me to uh, be able to print uh, new panels uh, as necessary. Now we could also use this as a form. I've seen some interesting videos where People will put down, uh, say, a 12K carbon 
um, after putting mold release on a 3D print and then just pull that off and then start uh, putting more carbon on the back side of it and you get a very close pro proximity at least within a millimeter of a panel. So we may try that um, and see if we can reduce some of the weight on the car. So uh, one of the problems I was having is this material is relatively thin. So out in the sun, it was actually kind of lifting up over time, uh, which was not good. And plus I was getting some cracking here um, in the uh, uh, epoxy layer. So what I've done is I actually bonded a piece of steel to the bottom of this weak area here. So it'll allow two things. First of all, it'll allow me to get the shape just right by giving it a little bit of bend. Remember, <clears throat> it's panel, the panel adhesive in here is not going to allow it bend a lot, but that's why you see it clamped down here uh, just to get uh, it next to the lines. And then I'll uh, sand this out uh, and then fill the crack if I have to with a little bit of um, panel bond. Um, but anyway, that uh, should solve that problem. Uh, we had the same issue over here. So again, a steel plate going underneath here. The steel plate was actually, uh, I drilled a bunch of holes in it um, just so, uh, you know, uh, as an extra safety measure to give it something, the panel bond, something mechanical to hold on to. So that should stay uh, okay. Um, we have to take care of this sharp edge here. Because uh, on the other side, you can see that it, um, which I do like better, which it fades out um, earlier. So uh, we're going to handle that. We have uh, the gaps on the hood. So hood is sitting over there. Um, as soon as I get these guys um, unclamped uh, and everything, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the hood on and, and do a little trimming there. Gap here on the door. Um, gaps on the door here they're way too tight but now at least the door is functional when the car is on the ground so this gap actually expands a little bit when it's on the lift which is okay but we need it for a uh, specific width when it's actually sitting on the ground um, we got a lip here that I have to take care of um, we've got some uh, Got to do, redo the primer here um, on this guy. We've got these plates in uh, that uh, block all of the kind of uh, ugly looking stuff behind the uh, engine scoop. Um, one of the biggest problems that I had noticed and I think a couple of viewers had also was I have that transition there uh, from the roof to the engine cover. And that one over there looks okay it needs some fixing i need to get um i need to get that gap a little bit tighter um uh, and get the level uh worked out so we did that here with some fiberglass filler um that's got a nice base on it now we can put our uh, regular filler on top of that the next issue <coughs> is this here i took it um, we had a big gap here. I actually sanded this area down so that it was uh, right next to the carbon. Um, so then I can come back and fill this area. It turns out this is actually a low spot, so that worked out pretty well. But we'll put some fiberglass filler in there and then rebody work that. Uh, we've got to get these gaps a little tighter. Um, I have some ideas on doing that, uh, which is just panel alignment. Um, and fitting same over here uh, these doors need gapping as well so we got the console out and I got it um, body worked and so now it's ready to get um, covered in carbon fiber um, so <clears throat> we'll do the same skinning procedure that we always do and then um, I've got some bagging material, so I'm going to bag it afterwards, make sure we get all of the, uh, that we don't have any uh, bridging or any gaps. Um, so make it look real nice.
So everybody, I uh, hope you like this episode. Uh, thanks again to Creality for uh, sending me all of the uh, uh, equipment. So the Scan Ferret and the CRM4, which we are currently running right now to do some prints for those guys right there, which are the inserts. Um, I've redesigned them. I like the design better. And not only that, they fit better because we use the scan ferret to actually uh, get exactly what this looks like here on the engine cover. So that worked out really well. So again, a big thank you to Creality. Um, other things, it's, oh my God, is it hot out? Uh, I'm sure a lot of other people are facing the same thing, so I'm no different. Um, but it's supposed to cool down here a little bit more so we can get back to some of the sanding and whatnot. And we'll do that uh, center console. Uh, we also uh, have started on the kind of map light area. I've actually taken that out and body worked it. And so we're going to skin that in carbon fiber as well. So anyway, uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do. And uh, we'll see you next time.